Although this video is part of a series, be sure to check out the full playlist in the description of this video. Well, we've accomplished what we were trying to do. We were able to send digital information uh, from one computer to another using radio waves and getting a nice looking formatted output on the other end. Uh, so we've completed our task, but let's look at other options. We, I was using, you know, you know, two-way walkie-talkie radios, uh, but you can use anything. We also looked at using a microphone and a speaker. Uh, here in my hand, I have a little FM transmitter. You can get this, so in your car, you plug this into your phone or your MP3 player, and you can now play, you know, your music through your FM radio if you don't have Bluetooth or a auxiliary input. This is about $10 off Amazon. You can set it to a number of different channels. You just find a place on your radio where there's no channel being broadcast. And you can say, this is unrealistic for what we're trying to accomplish uh, because uh, this can only transmit a couple of feet. And if you were to somehow boost it, you'd be breaking the law. You can't just be sending out uh, signals long range on these frequencies uh, without a license. Uh, but shortwave, you know, through the room, just for fun, we're going to do that. We're going to take this and send it, not to a regular radio I have in my car, but to this $10 SDR dongle with antenna and hopefully with a little software magic we'll be able to grab those radio signals and put them into MIDI modems so we can decode the messages being sent. First thing we need to do though is generate some data to send. I'm getting a little bored of sending fake address and stuff so let's just let's just generate some data from my computer. Uh, the tree command will give you a tree structure of directories so I'm going to give it uh, my uh, USR folder, bin folder, and we get this nice little tree here. But if we do the same thing and we pipe it into mini modem dash dash transmit uh, 110 and then I do F for file and I'll call this files dot wave. Do that, kill it after a few seconds and then I can uh, list out that file here Oops, list files that wave, and we can see that I generated a wave file. And if I list that out again and make it human readable, we can see that in those few seconds I generated a wave file that is, if you can read that, 184 megabytes in size. And if I go to play that file. It is 33 minutes long already, just from those three seconds of generating data. To keep things simple for this test, I'm just going to convert that to an MP3 and put it on my MP3 player. FFmpeg-i for input file, I'll give it the files.wave, and I will make the output files.mp3. And in a matter of moments, I will have an MP3 that I can put on my MP3 player. Now we need the software that we're going to be capturing this with. And for this example, I'm going to be using a program, a GUI program called uh, GQRX. Quickly check my package manager, aptitude search GQRX. And you can see that we have a package. It says it's GQRX-SDR. And you can see that the description says it's a software-defined radio receiver. Let's go ahead and start that up. We agree with a nice GUI interface. I'm going to click the play button up here. You can see the waves going. You can see that on that 86.0 uh, on our frequency. You can see my settings here. I'm setting this to normal. And WFM stereo, I think, is getting me the clearest signal for this. I'm going to set our FM transmitter to 89.9. That's what it turns on at. And uh, I'll plug it into my mp3 player here and make sure my mp3 player is on. Back on our desktop application here I am going to scroll up to 89.9 and we can already see it showing up right here. Actually lined up very perfectly uh, and uh, the audio is coming around good. You can always resize this if you need to clarify and also adjust the squelch and other things off to the right hand side of the screen. Now on the bottom right of the main screen of GQRX you'll see uh, your gain here which is like your volume uh, and then you have some options here you can actually uh, play this across the network record it uh, play the recordings and this last little setting tells you where you're going to save so you click that and this little box comes up you can see it's by default it's going to save to your home directory go ahead close that uh, you can save it to a different directory if you'd like but for this I'm just going to click record and I'm going to record for a couple of seconds here let it go ahead and go just so we can collect some data. 
And once you've decided you recorded enough, you can go ahead and click the record button again. And now we can close GQRX. Now in our shell, we'll navigate to the folder where we just saved. Again, by default, it's going to be your home directory. And if I list out the files, I can do GQRX, sorry, GQRX. And you'll see that it gives it a timestamp. So this is uh, the recording it made, GQRX. It gives you a date and timestamp and the frequency you're recording at all in the name. Again, if you record more, obviously this would change. Uh, and now, if we were to take that and put it into mini modem, dash dash receive at 110 dash f for file, we're going to get an error. And what this error says is that the input stream must be one channel, not two, because we recorded this as a stereo channel and probably could have changed that in QRX, but really easy to change that. We can convert using FFmpeg. So we just FFmpeg dash i for our input file, which is our GQRX file, then dash AC1 for audio channel one, and then give it an output name. And uh, Minimodem is going to want it as a wave file, so we'll just say, I'll call it 1.wave. Go ahead and save that. It only took a second. So again, the entire command is the FFmpeg dash I, and then your input file name, and then dash AC1 to convert to audio channel one and give it an output file, in this case, a wave file. At this point, we should be able to say, yeah, if I could type mini modem, mini modem, dash dash uh, rx for receive 110 dash f for file, and give it the file name, which in this case is one dot wave, right there. And when I hit enter, you can see that we have some lines of text, and this is the text that was sent. So you see, we recorded enough to get a couple of folders in the tree output and it will display it as tree output because that's all plain text when you're using the tree command. So we just transmit data from one machine to another, in this case an mp3 player, but it can be anything with an audio output, uh, using an FF, FF, an FM transmitter, which was $10 on Amazon, you probably get one cheaper. Uh, again, that's, that's just for fun. We can only transmit, uh, you know, I, I, I would doubt it be more than 15 or 20 feet with this. Maybe 30 feet you can hear some music, but to get clear audio for something like this is not going much further. And uh, again, if you were to somehow like hook an antenna to this to boost it, you know, probably going to get in trouble. Uh, but just did it as a proof of concept. Today we did it with a GUI program, capturing that audio, converting it at, back to text using Minimodem. Uh, I'm going to see you should be able to do that all in a one-liner uh, from the command line. Haven't done it yet. If I can figure it out, uh, I will definitely do a video on that. I have definitely done uh, used shell commands to record to a WAV file just as we have. I need to see if that command will allow me to pipe the audio output directly into mini modem. Um, I'm pretty sure that I can figure out how to do that. So I do thank you for watching. Again, this video is just for fun. Just kind of wrapping up things here with the uh, radio transmission and data transfer uh, videos. I hope you enjoyed them. I'm going to be getting back uh, very soon to just some very basic shell stuff. And then in the new year, I will have a week or two probably on uh, some Android stuff. Uh, so I hope you're looking forward to that. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.